Seems like I've not spoke about Interrail for quite some time. Let's change that right now. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. And as you can tell by the title today, I'm going to be giving you my Interrail guide for 2019. Now, obviously, if you have watched this channel for quite some time, you will know I've done quite a few videos on interrailing and they will actually be linked in the playlist, which is linked on screen right now. So if you missed any of those videos or you just want a lot more interrail advice, go and check out them videos. They get quite good feedback and a lot of people have said they have been very, very helpful for their journey. So do go and check them out after this one, though stay right here because this is the most up-to-date interrail guide i'm going to be doing i'm going to go through everything interrail base today for you guys i'm going to cover every single basis so the plan is once you have finished watching this video there is nothing you don't know about interrail so let's just jump straight to if you do find any of this useful at any point be sure to let me know by leaving a like and subscribe if you're new around here but let's just jump straight into the guide before we do start let me know if any of you guys have interrailed let me know which country you're from and your favorite country in europe down in the comment section and let's just compare answers with everyone else i'll start it off by putting my answer in the comments so go and check that out okay so the first thing i feel like i should mention because this is something i get asked quite a lot is what is the difference between eu rail and interrail now the answer is there is absolutely no difference they are just simply for different parts of the world so interrail is for the european union so for people who are part of europe have european passports and then eu rail is for non-eu citizens so that is just straightforward as it gets so for anyone in the uk we're going to be going to eu rail thank you to brexit for that that's one of the many things that will be changing after Brexit, but let's not get into that. Let's jump straight into what is new for Interrail in 2019. So there are a few new things for Interrail in 2019, which I have come across, mainly being a couple of new passes. Now, the first one is a three-day pass within a one-month period. Now, I'm not going to dive into these passes too much because I will be touching on them in just a moment, but that is a great option for short weekend trips, but I'm going to touch on it in a moment, as I said, because it may not actually be worth it. But two passes that are definitely worth it is a two month pass and a three month pass, which they now do. And you'll be surprised at the pricing compared to the one month pass. It's very, very good value for money. And then they've added 53 Greek islands, I believe. I'm just going to check there. Yes. So 53 Greek islands, which is now available on the Greek island hopping pass, which is essentially interrail. But for ferries, you get to use it on ferries. 53 Greek islands is... It's pretty impressive and that is a great option if you do want to check out Greece. So that is new for 2019. And then something which I believe wasn't an initiative a couple of years ago, but it is now one and it's a very, very successful one is called Discover EU. And essentially it's a company, I believe, which offers 12,000 to 15,000 free interrail passes for people who are aged 18. Now, obviously this doesn't apply to me, but if you are aged 18 and you want a taste of travel, you want to explore Europe, this is a great option. You just have to apply. Obviously there's gonna be a lot of people that do apply. There's some requirements and stuff like that, but all the information will be in the website linked down below. I do want to say I have no affiliation with Discover EU or Interrail, but Interrail, if this video does somehow get to you guys, hit me up. I would love to collaborate because I absolutely love what you're doing. But as I said, no affiliation to either of them. But the Discover EU pass and initiative is just absolutely awesome. It just gives free passes to people who are aged 18. They've provided 15,000 for this summer and then 12,000 they are now actually allocating for fall, which is obviously autumn. And it's essentially you get a one to 30 day trip, you know, whatever you want to do and you can cross four borders. So whilst you can't go to every single country, it does give you great options to explore countries in a bit more depth. You can pick four countries and explore them for a month which is just a great great option to have so that is something to definitely look into for 2019 now next up i'm going to discuss what type of pass you need for your trip so i've got a couple of examples down here so if you're going on a trip which is going to last from one to seven days then the best option is three days within one month for the global passes if you want to try and visit different countries or another option is to get a one country pass now if you're only going for one to seven days you may actually be best just exploring one country and then you can get a one country pass for that and they are available for pretty much every single country which means you can use the trains within that single country to get around or to be honest if your trip is one to seven days it may actually be best if you don't go with the interrail passes and you just check the price for one-off tickets whether it be for train or bus because sometimes it will work out a lot cheaper especially if you're only traveling maybe two or three times it will certainly be cheaper just to buy the tickets as one-off so if you're going for one 
one to seven days, then they are your best options. Now, if your trip consists of a seven days to 14 day trip, then your best options are five days or seven days within a month. And the reason for that is because even if you're going for 14 days, you do not want to go any more than seven trips within that period because then you're just literally skipping over places. If you go for 14 days and you travel every single day or even like 10 or 11 days, then you are literally spending a day in each place and then moving on and you're just going to be skimming over places and you won't get a real feel for that place, whether it be a city or just a really, really nice chilled out beach or just landscape place, mountains, lakes, whatever you want to go and visit, you will literally be skipping over it. So my opinion is that the best option is the five days within one month, even if it's a 14 day trip, because that way you still got a decent amount of days that you can use your pass to travel with and at the same time, you can spend enough time in each place because five travel days over 14 days of your trip, you know, you're spending around three days in each place, which is a perfect amount. And you can just still travel at a relaxed pace and still see quite a lot of places. And obviously, if you want to use those travel days to get to different countries, it's still very, very possible because most trips, I believe the average interrail train trip is between four and six hours. So that's a perfect amount of time just to chill and obviously night trains are a perfect way to travel especially if you're short for time because you will save money on accommodation and you will get to a different country another quick tip if you're staying in one region for a 7 to 14 day trip do also check bus and train tickets as one-off purchases and don't go with the interrail pass it may be cheaper if you're traveling like a specific region like maybe france spain and portugal you're staying quite close and the buses or trains for one-off travel may actually work out cheaper if you add them all up than get an interrail pass now if your trip is 14 to 30 days the best option is to get 15 days within two months of travel because again, you don't want to be skipping over places and 15 days, even if it's over a month of travel, then at least you're spending two days in a place and I still think that's a bit rushed. So you don't need the 15 days straight, you don't need the 22 days straight and you certainly do not need just the one month straight pass because if you're doing that, you are traveling every single day and yes, you may see 30 places, but you will literally see them. You won't get to explore them. The whole purpose of traveling is to actually travel the place, explore the place, experience what it has to offer. So spending a very limited amount of time in each place is not the way to do it. So if your trip is between 14 and 30 days, then I do recommend the 15 day pass. Obviously, if it's shorter towards the 14, maybe 15, 16 days, then go for the option, which I mentioned before. But if you are getting on towards three to four weeks, then definitely go for a 15 day within two month period pass because it's the best value for money and it allows you plenty of travel, but also great time to actually check out the places you're going to visit. Now, if you're going for any longer than a month, there are two great options, which is the two month pass and the three month pass. And for long-term travel, these are incredibly affordable in terms of pricing compared to the previous passes. They're literally only about 30 pounds or about 50 euros more expensive than a month pass for a three month pass, which is absolutely brilliant. So if you do want to do some longer term travel, then passes are just absolutely excellent and they are continuous travel days. So if you are traveling for three months, then you can literally travel every single day for three months, which obviously I again don't recommend. But if that's what you want to do, then go for it because it is possible and it's a great way to explore pretty much all of Europe. Now, another question I get asked a lot is first class or second class passes. Now, first class is definitely quieter. It's more comfortable. You can get some plug sockets and stuff like that if you want to plug anything in, charge some of your phones, laptops, anything like that. But it is more expensive in terms of if you need to reserve and obviously you don't get first pick on like night trains or anything like that. You still have to reserve. The only good positive about reservations is if you don't have to reserve a certain train, then you pretty much don't have to reserve because it's never going to be full. Whereas if you compare it to second class, don't get me wrong, second class is still incredibly comfortable. I do actually recommend going with second class overall but you don't get like plug sockets and stuff like that. It's obviously a lot more crowded. So even on some trains where it's not required to reserve, you may actually have to just to make sure you get a seat. But I do highly recommend going with second class because you're going to meet more travelers that way. A lot more backpackers go in second class compared to first class and it's cheaper. So it just works out better. Now, in terms of using interrail on public transport, it does differ from country to country. So just check it out on the website and just do your research on that but places like amsterdam so i think actually the whole of the netherlands you can use your interrail pass on public transport you can in slovenia and germany on the s-bahn you can but not on the u-bahn but then there's some places
places where you just can't use it on public transports like Paris or France, you cannot use it on their metro systems. So as I said, do your research for each individual destination. Now in terms of outwards and inward travel, I get a lot of questions on this. That is basically to get out of your home country. So for me in Liverpool, I could get the train to like Manchester airport or go down to London and you can use it on the day that you are leaving the country or coming back in. And it does, I believe, count towards a travel day. I'm not entirely sure on that, so do try and find out the research before that or even ring into rail up. I've never personally had to use it. I just fly out because the airports are quite close to me anyway. But if you do need to use it, just ring into rail. I'm sure they'll give you the information on that. And the only other bit of information is a lot of people try and use it on the Eurostar. You do actually have to reserve. You can't just show up and say, this is my outbound journey that they won't have a clue what you're saying. You do need to reserve, but it is possible to use. So just do bear that in mind if you want to go to Paris, Brussels, or I believe Amsterdam now also is part of the Eurostar service. Now, how do you actually get your pass? Well, Interrail send it out. I believe it's quite quick after you've ordered it and they send you a pack, which you will be seeing right now. It basically includes like a map, some information, and obviously your journal, which is like the diary. Make sure you fill this out because your interrail pass is obviously your ticket, but the journal, the diary is also your pass. It's so the train conductors know exactly where you've got on and where you're getting off and obviously how many travel days you've used because you can abuse your interrail pass if they don't check it. So make sure you fill it out before you get on because they will get very, very angry and they might actually attempt to try and get you off the train. It doesn't happen very often, but just make sure you fill it out. And then the main bit of advice I always give, which you probably heard me say a lot of times, but not many people know about, when to order your pass, order it at the end of every month because Interrail always do discounts. It's usually between 10 and 20%. Most of the time it's 15% and it kind of coincides with payday. So it's quite clever from Interrail, but obviously it's the best time to order because it's 15% off global passes pretty much at the end of every single month. So always wait until the end of the month to order your Interrail pass unless you're going on like a very last minute trip, but that's the best time to order. Right, so next I thought I'd touch on whether you should solo travel or travel as a group because that's a question again I get asked quite a lot, especially because I do quite a lot of solo traveling. Now my best bit of advice is if you are traveling for your first time and you have like-minded friends who want to travel, want to visit the same places you have similar interests, then travel as a group. It will be an incredible experience and you get to share the experience of traveling in this style for the first time with your friends, which is just something which is incredible. But if either of those two answers are no, so if it's not your first time traveling or your friends aren't really like-minded, they don't really like traveling, different hobbies and stuff like that, then travel solo because it is a great way to just travel, you have the freedom to do whatever you want, whenever you want, you can go to whichever destinations you want to, and it will really develop you as a person. Now, don't get me wrong, if you haven't traveled before, I'm not saying don't solo travel, because again, solo traveling is something you can do at any time, even if it is your first trip, it's a great way to do it, but obviously, it's probably a bit better just to kind of test the waters as a group, because then you can get the feel for traveling, if you like traveling in that type of style, especially backpacking, you can figure it out with friends, and then decide if you want to do more traveling solo but solo traveling as i said it's an excellent thing to do because it really does develop you as a person and obviously you are completely unrestricted but if you do like traveling as part of the group then interrailing is a great way to do it because it's just so relaxed you get to see some of the nicest places in europe and obviously most groups tend to go in the summer and europe at summertime is a great great place to be around there's so many just great amazing places to visit so many good parties so many nice beaches you can chill you can party you can just see cities there's such a variety of things that you can do and it's great for both solo travelers and group traveling so whichever one you go with you will certainly not regret your decision now another huge question i do get asked is how do the trains work and how do reservations work now i have touched upon it in my first interrail guide i believe it's in the second part so that will be linked again in that playlist which you can just go and check out after this video but the best bit of advice i can give for how trains work is use the rail planner app or the interrail websites where you can literally just plan your route and just get a rough idea of trains that you want to take you can check which train station it departs from, which train station it arrives to in each destination because obviously some cities have numerous train stations. You can then check your maps on your phone to see whereabouts it is and how you can get there. And then my recommendation is to get there about 30 to 45 minutes before the train so you can find your platform. It's very, very easy to actually find the platform when you get there, but obviously if it's your first time, you'll probably panic a bit about doing so. And obviously it's all in English, it's just numbers, you can find the platform very, very easily. But if you do have any problems, 
ask someone. It's the it's literally the most straightforward thing you can do. Just go and ask someone. The best people to ask though is not the people who work there because often there is a language barrier. Go to them second. Firstly, go to fellow backpackers because they will be able to help you out. They've obviously in the same situation. Maybe they're actually in the exact same situation where they've never traveled before or maybe they're experienced travelers who will just help you out in an instant. And then obviously if they can't help you out, go and ask staff because a great feature is Google Translate. You can actually download the language offline and just type in whatever you want to say in English and it will translate it to their language for them and it can even speak it out on your phone so it's a great option to have so use that if there is a language barrier at all and in terms of reservations they're done either on an online portal and the tickets will be sent out to your address so do that before you go if you have any reservations you have to make and you know you're going to be there on certain days or you can do them in person now for night trains I recommend maybe three to seven days before the train. And then just for regular trains that require reservation, I recommend like two days before the trip itself. So when you arrive at that destination, reserve for the trip when you are leaving that destination. And obviously do bear in mind, if it's summertime, you may need a bit more time to reserve, especially on popular routes, for example, Berlin to Prague. It's probably gonna be very, very popular during the summer. So just make sure you keep that in mind if you are traveling in the summer months. So in terms of route planning, I have a bit of advice that I'm going to share then some kind of sample routes and then some destinations that I highly recommend. Now, in terms of planning your route, I just recommend checking for places you want to go to and then just basically checking where the trains run between those places and how frequently they are. And then just make some notes in either your phone, laptop or notepad or whatever you want to make notes on but just be very, very flexible and don't have strict dates that you want to stick to. Don't literally plan the date and the time of every single train because it just kind of ruins the trip because travel at the end of the day is all about being spontaneous. So just make sure you are very, very flexible, but also have a rough route that you want to take. Now, if you have absolutely no idea where you want to go, as I said, I'm going to give you some sample routes and obviously some of the best destinations that I think you should go to. But at the end of the day, just do some research on the type of person you are. If you just want to see cities, then just check out some of the best cities that you can go and see. If you want to see beaches, if you want a place for good for solo travelers, if you want a place that's just literally full of parties, then just check out those places because at the end of the day, there's nothing worse than getting to a place and then spending three days there and just realizing it wasn't for you. Amsterdam wasn't my favorite place. I just didn't really have the vibe of the place. I just didn't really like it, to be honest. And I ended up spending three days there. Whereas Budapest seems like my type of place from what I've heard and read because it's full of solo travelers and it's just really, really chilled out. And obviously there's some parties if you want to get involved in that, but it just seems like a good place to chill and obviously just explore. And I actually only spent about 12 hours there. It was less than a day. It was just a stopover. So I wish I obviously allocated that time better. And it just comes down to research. So as I said, research is key, but make notes and stay very, very flexible. Now, some classic routes I've got noted down here is the classic cities route, which includes Paris, Amsterdam, Berlin, Prague, Krakow, Sorry, I'm reading it off the here. It's just, I need to remember them all. Krakow, Budapest, Vienna, Bled, which isn't really a city, but everyone goes to like Bled. And then you can kind of either go to Italy, Croatia, Germany, or home from uh, Slovenia itself. So obviously that's a classic route that pretty much most people take, I would say a good 60, 70% of people take that route or there or thereabouts. Now, a couple of other routes that you can take is the west of Europe or what's considered west, which includes London. Obviously, if you're not from the UK, you can include London, Paris, Lyon, Barcelona, Madrid, and Lisbon. Now that's a high budget trip because it's kind of expensive. Whilst Portugal isn't, but Spain, France, England, obviously expensive. The other route I mentioned, the classic route, is kind of a medium budget. And then the Eastern Europe route, I don't want to offend anyone. It's not completely Eastern Europe, but it's just what most people consider the Eastern. So if you're from Krakow, Prague, I know you don't like being called Eastern European because you're not, but I'm just going to include it in this. So it is Prague, Krakow, Bratislava, Budapest, Bucharest, Sofia, Belgrade, Sarajevo, I believe I've pronounced that right, and then Dubrovnik in Croatia. Now that's deemed a low budget route because those parts of Europe are cheaper than obviously Central and Western Europe. If you want a bit of a cheaper route, but also still incredibly fantastic, then that's the route for you. Obviously, there's a lot more places you can go and visit and obviously a lot more routes that you can take. So again, just do some research on that. I've literally not included Italy at all. And obviously Italy seems to be an amazing country. I've still yet to visit. I do plan on doing so at some point. And obviously the Alps, if you want to go like Switzerland, Austria, like all that place, 
not even mentioned it so obviously there's some places that you can check out if you are interested in that but some of my key recommendations for just destinations in general are portugal slovenia croatia and greece because they are very budget friendly they have a lot of backpackers going there which kind of is a negative for some people but obviously if you want to meet people budget friendly backpackers great combination and obviously in the summer months these places have incredible scenery and incredible weather which makes them one of the best options best destinations for traveling in europe and the locals are the most friendly locals i think i've ever met in the world in those places so definitely check those places out now some budgeting advice to wrap out this guide now i have actually done a full video on budgeting for europe which will be linked in the playlist and on screen at the moment so go and check that out if you guys want some in-depth budget and advice but i'm going to give you some tips right now but the first tip is save by eating in which is very very obvious but the way to do that is get a hostel which gives you free breakfast and also has cooking facilities and the reason for that is you get one meal for free and then the cooking facilities means you can cook your other two three meals however many meals you have in the place which obviously saves you a lot of money compared to eating out so that is a great option for saving money try couch surfing because at the end of the day it's free you get to meet locals who are like-minded people they are usually people who have traveled and just want to host other people who are traveling and they probably have the best bits of advice of where to go where to eat and stuff like that for the destination that you are in avoid using taxis in europe taxis in europe are expensive southeast asia it's fine in europe not so fine very very expensive use public transport where possible stay outside of the main area is another good tip because if you stay very very central to wherever you are it's probably going to cost you a lot more whereas if you stay just outside it's going to be cheaper and then if you include the cost of getting to the central area it's still a lot cheaper so just do bear that in mind and just try and stay a bit out of the central place Plus, it's quieter. If you want a decent night's sleep, stay outside the center. Now, this is what I was mentioning just a minute ago. Avoid summer months, which is basically June, July and August, because everything is significantly more expensive from flights to transportation to obviously accommodation, food, everything, excursions. It's all a lot more expensive in Europe. So use the shoulder months, which they're called, which is basically April and May and September and October where the weather is still decent it's not as good as it is in the summer but it's still decent it's probably better than home so check out some of these destinations in those months be flexible with everything as I mentioned before if you have strict dates and strict times everything will be a lot more expensive because you have to do everything on those days so whilst the hostel might be cheaper a day after because it's quieter or it's not a weekend then it's going to be a lot more expensive because you have to stick to that date. Whereas if you are flexible, it may be £5, £10 cheaper to travel. Maybe a day later via a train or whatever you have to do if you need to reserve. Maybe one day you have to reserve for a train and the next you don't because it's a weekend and then a weekday. So just be flexible with your dates. But my number one tip, which is going to sound very, very bizarre, is to not worry about your budget because if you worry about your budget too much you're going to get too focused on it and it's just going to put a downer on the trip so actually just ignore it if you want to eat out eat out if you want to stay somewhere stay somewhere if you want to travel wherever just if you want to do whatever do whatever you want if you have saved enough then you have got enough just do not worry about budgeting but obviously do bear in mind a couple of those tips but if you're actually out and about don't worry about it at all if you've saved enough as i said you will have a fantastic time and you don't want to put any downers on the trip by constantly worrying about how much you are spending but that is all for my updated interrail guide for 2019 as i said before do let me know if any of you guys have any questions if you guys have interrailed and as i said let me know your favorite country in europe i will be putting mine in the comments below if you did like any of these tips in this video be sure to let me know by leaving a like and go and check out the rest of my interrail content which would have been linked in the playlist at the start of the video you can click the card type thing I think it's a little I symbol in the corner of the screen. And you can check out the rest of my Interrail content. And obviously, if you are new around here, be sure to subscribe to the channel. But thank you all for watching, guys. Till next time, goodbye.